how does that charge want to create through you? Does it want to create through emotions? Does it want to create through movements? Does it create through behaviors and coping mechanisms? Does it create by making something on a canvas or inventing something or singing or creating events? How does that life force that's stuck in you that we call stress and trauma, how does it want to create? Just ask it. See what it shows you and show me when you find out. Welcome to the Holistic Life Navigation Podcast, where we explore life through the lens of somatics. I'm Luis Mojica, a somatic educator who teaches people how to find safety in themselves. Your turn to learn begins now. Trauma and art, uh, they're very similar to me, and I'll explain. Um, when people hear this, they think things like, how can you say abuse is beautiful or artistic? How can you say war and poverty and struggle and oppression and all these traumatic, abusive things we experience? How are they beautiful? It's not the actual behavior or the experience or the event. It's the expressions from them. When I first discovered music, it was the vibration of the guitar that moved into my body and moved something in me. It moved something in me alive. It awakened something in me, a part of myself that, that was buried under stacks of traumatic events that was frozen under thick layers of ice, you know, gasping for, for breath, trying to at least. And the vibration of sound and the guitar against my body started to slowly over the course of many years fall out that freeze that had been working in my favor to protect me. So my personal experience of sexual traumas and assaults and ridicule because of my body led, led me to the guitar. And I'll tell you what I mean. Um, I was born with an intersex expression that caused estrogen dominance, right? So I developed breast tissue and hips and everything from my collarbone to my genitals was numb. I just didn't even feel or look or um, accept that I had these body parts because they were, they were met with such hostility in the past that I didn't want anyone to ever see them again, which meant I couldn't see them. So I had to dissociate from that part of myself. And in that dissociation, I wasn't present with that part of my body, but that part still exists. Just because we disconnect from a part of us doesn't mean the part goes away. So it would be many years later that that part of my body would press a guitar up to it and I'd strum the strings and the vibration would go into these places that were frozen, that were dissociated, that were numb, that were scared. And they would find a temporary solace in this vibration, in this pressure from the guitar, which was once a tree, right? It would find a home. And that's when I started um, my early exploration into the subconscious. As I would strum the guitar, I would feel something come up in my body and a story would emerge. Now, to me, these were all mythologies. Later on, after therapy and becoming more conscious about traumas that I had essentially forgotten and blacked out, I would learn these mythologies were my trauma events, my stories that I didn't even remember stories that I forgot happened, stories I dissociated from and disconnected from. They came through these songs. And these songs came from different vibrations and my body's response to different chords and melodies and sounds. So music is my form of art and writing. Art takes so many shapes in this planet. You could be um, an inventor of a really fancy toilet, and that's your art. You could be a carpenter. You could be really great at running a register. Everyone has their own expression that comes through. This doesn't have to just be fine art or music or performance art that I'm talking about. Art to me is the expression, how the body expresses in this lifetime, how the body brings things that are subconscious, conscious. Think about a toilet, for instance. I don't know why I'm thinking of toilets so much right now, but I am. Think about a toilet. They didn't exist. Someone had to 
find it in their subconscious, find something within their mind, their body that never existed and make it physical. That's magic. And that's the magic of a mind. It brings things in that aren't here already. And we, that's art, right? You see a painting that never existed before. You hear a song that never existed before. We birth things into existence. That's why we call it creativity. It's a creation. Now, where somatics and trauma and art and expression all come together for me is my understanding and belief and experience of trauma is it's another being. It's not me. It's this greater cosmic force, this electricity that runs through me. It streams through the transmitters of my body to propel me out of harm's way. That's magical. The trauma is the artist. It is breathing me into form. It is causing me to scream, to throw up, to cry, to run, to freeze, to dissociate. It takes over my body. It floods me with its instructions so I can survive. This is a very different way of looking at trauma, and it's a way that I'm enamored by because I don't see a difference then between trauma and art or life and art, or even suffering in art. Actually, as I say that, I see the difference is that when I'm suffering, I'm in it. When I'm making art from the suffering, I'm witnessing the suffering. I am no longer the suffering itself. And that's the gift music gave me. And after working so long and so much in somatics and with people and with myself, I've really come to appreciate how art can somatically um, capture a part of us, awaken, I think is even a better word, awaken and permit a part of us to unfurl that we didn't even know was there. Really great, successful art is art that causes you to feel something. And that's why we chase it. That's why we follow people on the road and see their shows. So we buy their records. That's why we go hundreds of dollars to see Hamilton. <laughs> or is that just me? Where we want to, we're chasing that feeling it brings in us, just like a drug, just like anything else. But we mistake an it sometimes for the source of the feeling. It's not, it's the catalyst. It's awakening what's in us already that we aren't conscious of. And this is my experience of music. So I've had a bunch of people write to me over the last few months since I've been writing more about this topic saying, can you share more about your process as a musician and somatics, how that relates? And I thought it'd be great to actually use this song as an example that I just started writing. Um, the song is called Somebody's Son. And it's a great example of what I'm saying here. I have been working on a demo called Thunder for the Rainbow. And it's it's been a slow unfurling progress for about five years I've been working on these songs and it's done the demo is finished i'm going to go into the studio and start recording which i'm really excited about suddenly this song came through i thought the album was finished but this song came through and this melody came through and the moment i heard and felt the melody in my body it took me to a memory i forgot about it took me to this period in my life where i met this homeless man with my best friend in college and he changed me in so many ways that I wasn't even able to be fully present with at the time because I was so in it and looking back on it thanks to this music that came through and the song that was that was created I was able to witness him in my mind then sing about him and then listen to the song and I find this particularly fascinating around performance art um, for me, music, because you can record this and then listen to it. And over and over again, it awakens new awarenesses for you about what you're writing about, about parts of yourself. It's extremely cathartic. And I don't write for commercial success. I did like 15 years ago. I was obsessed with becoming a very successful, famous musician that wasn't in the cards. Instead, what was in the cards for me was to be a successful somatic educator. And I'm very happy that I followed that path. Music for me now is a form of expression and a way to share these parts of me with other people to see what it awakens in them. So I'm actually going to jump over to my studio and bring you with me and uh, play this song for you and explain some of the dynamics of uh, the symbolism of certain measures and melodies and what they awakened in me and how I came to 
letting this song come through my body and then I'll come back to my, my space here with you. So I'm here in my studio and I wanted to just take you through how this song came through my body. Um, it started in... It started with these, these chords and I was just playing them and letting my hands move. From them it was We drove out of town And picked up the homeless clown With the bisexual frown And as I was listening back to the recording I was feeling this um, pressure And I, I wanted more of kind of like an emotional expanse So I just played with the chords And I was going We This is D-sharp major. And when I played it here, it was like, um, I could feel this little key opening up my heart. And I wanted to sing it from this place and it brought me up into, we drove out of town and picked up the homeless clown with the bisexual frown. And it just kind of gave me space to sing it and um, get near these notes that are hard for me to reach. And in that reaching for these difficult notes, I experience this vulnerability. Uh, it's almost sometimes it feels a little exposed. And the image of the memories that were coming through the song and these chords, it was like looking at Polaroids that had been exposed to sunlight they were faded and distorted and I couldn't quite remember this person's face, but there were certain etchings and, and textures and, and really sensations when I thought of him that I could feel. And the sensations were much more present than the images. And so that comes through as I sing it in, in this key. So the way that it started to unfold, I'll, I'll sing a little bit of the song. We drove out of town And picked up that homeless clown With his bisexual frown They would laugh at him Or they ran from him Yet to you and I He felt like home just some boy out on his own Trying to warm a cold bench throne Never quite assimilated Take him off of the street that could hurt him Civility is what he calls a burden You can make someone want to be saved his clown face was tattooed and scarred on Asian androgynous guys give him a hard on And you just happen to be in the right place So these words and these emotions and these hard to hit keys for me My voice cracks at certain points I really want that for the song because as I play something in a different key, it moves me into a different place in my body. So it was originally in this, I think, C major. We drove out of town. I'm so, I feel my gut and my chest. And picked up the homeless clown with the bisexual frown. Like so deep. But then when I go, we drove out of town And picked up the homeless clown With his bisexual frown It's coming up into my face and my head more And 
I guess interestingly enough for me, this memory brings me to those places. It's a heightened place because this person, Clown, was his name. He was this homeless boy that my best friend and I in college took a liking to. And he was so unhinged. I mean, he had nothing to lose. He wasn't very socialized, or at least seems like that. He was very feral, if you will. And I remember picking him up, which is what the song is kind of talking about, this memory we were driving, and we picked him up from the uh, side of the road he was hitchhiking. And we went to this political conference, you can call it, and he was just screaming and spitting, and he was just pure chaos, and he ended up getting kicked out. And at the time, I had spent a lifetime fawning, a lifetime being really good and really still and really appropriate. And to be seen with this person who was being so inappropriate, it was the medicine I needed at the time. There was this elevated, almost euphoria. And so when I change the key and I'm up here in this part of my head, it takes me into that euphoria as I'm singing it. And then toward the end of the song, this other piece comes in. And it's this, to me, it's this absolute chaos and I'm, I'm composing it with the drums and bass. So there's a lot of kind of crashing and being thrown back and forth that happens. And that's how it felt in my body when he would do these things, this chaos, this, this, he would disturb the soils of my body. And it, this is why I like to talk about rupture and being offended um, and being triggered as a, a positive thing, because he was really triggering and extremely offensive and created lots of ruptures. And it would till the gardens of my body and it would create new life in me. It would awaken something in me from his behavior. So this, this melody captures that. I feel the tension in my body. I almost forget to breathe while I'm playing it because it, it somatically I'm reliving the witness of his chaos. And so the song closes with that. It goes on. <laughs> filthy streets you were once somebody's son and now you have disappeared a town queer with clown tears just another angel gone and this ending is so important to me because it was a point in my life when <clears throat> I remember I had been my grandmother had been hospitalized um, and she was critical and she, it was about 30 miles away from where I lived and I got in my car and I went 90 miles per hour to the hospital and people were beeping at me and, and people were, you know, um, judging me for speeding quickly probably, which I understand. And then this thing would happen after that moment where I would notice every time someone's doing something that bothers me, I don't really know their story. I don't know who they are, I don't know why they're doing it, I don't know where they're from, I'm just seeing the behavior, I'm seeing the remnant, the expression of it. And so I, I, um, I started doing this practice where everyone was someone's child, everyone, a dictator, a criminal, um, someone who is homeless on the side of the street, someone who works at a gas station, a college professor, everyone was someone's child. And it would settle me so deeply and it would invite such a compassion for all these people, this like love for them, never negating what they've done or who they, who they, how they behave, but this purity of, oh, that's someone's child. That, that was once someone's child. So when I say those words about him in that closing phrase, you were once somebody's son, my, my, my father heart just opens and melts to him. It did then and it does now. Um, and it's just beautiful.
beautiful to me. It just, it, it takes me somewhere deep in myself. So uh, I'm going to play the whole song for you now, and then I'll move back to my office for the rest of the episode. We drove out of town And picked up the homeless clown With the bisexual frown they would laugh at him Or they ran from him Yet to you and I He felt like home Just some boy out on his own Trying to warm a cold bench throne Never quite Assimilated Take him off the street that could hurt him Civility is what he calls a burden You can make someone want to be saved His clown face was tattooed and scarred on Asian androgynous guys give him a heart on And you just happen to be in the right place filthy streets You will want somebody's son But now you have disappeared A town queer with clown tears Just another angel gone Wow, how about those crows? I mean, you just can't make this stuff up. I'm so um, grateful that was caught on live in the recording because uh, there are so many times in my life I'll be making a song or playing a song or letting the song come through me and the world around me, the environment around me will be singing with me. It will be responding to whatever I'm in. It's amazing. It's this incredible moment of decadent presence and being so in the world but being so otherworldly as well it's just it's just a total honor and I feel so privileged to allow that spirit to access me um I'm curious what where the song took you whether it was the story about the song the melody itself the way I wrote it how it came through I'm really curious how it took you I would love to hear um I would love to hear some reviews through the podcast platform, whatever you listen to this on, about the overall podcast so more people can find it. And even about this show, I would love to see them. But you can also email me. You can go to my website, holisticlifenavigation.com. Or if you're on YouTube, you can write in the comments. I just love to know where this took you and what kind of art you make and what you're understanding more about art now somatically in your body. I find that trauma transmutes through art because, again, the very process of making art, in my experience, is one, this humility of I let it take me over and show me what to do. I don't make the song. It just kind of comes through. Then I try to relearn it and shape it. So the humility of letting it take over me, letting it move through me the way it wants to, and then witnessing it as outside of me, that's how the creation of art is for me. The feeling comes in, sometimes the melody comes in, like I'll hum it in my mind or my in my in my head for a little while, and then I'll play it on the piano. And then from that melody comes words and stories and characters and expressions from within me. It's profound. And as those expressions come through, a song is created. It leaves my body and it has its own life that other people get to experience and I get to witness. That's also my parallel experience with trauma release and with stress and with any high sensation experience that's overwhelming. 
the humility to let it move through you instead of clenching against it or saying, I shouldn't be sad or I shouldn't be anxious or I shouldn't be grieving. Let it move through you, whatever that is, and follow it. Let it move you to the couch to cry. Let it move you to the phone to call for help. Let it move you to the refrigerator to cook food. Let it move you so that it can move through you and leave so you can see it was never you to begin with. It was something that came into you to save you. And when we get traumatized, that thing that comes in gets stuck. And if you think of universal life force energy, electricity, lightning, we can't handle that in our bodies. It's too much. It's meant to move through. It's not meant to stay. And this is where illness and pain and depression come from because this charge, this overwhelming amount of life force gets stuck and it does damage. When that life force moves, it doesn't overwhelm us, it nurtures us, it brings us vitality, it activates us into life, we are alive. And I have learned this about trauma through being a musician for so long and watching the art of the trauma spirit move through people's bodies. So if you're listening to, the, listening to this and you can separate what was done to you, what horrible unjust thing happened, separate that from this life force charge that's in you, you'll start to understand what it is I'm speaking about here. And it might take you to something really creative. How does that charge want to create through you? Does it want to create through emotions? Does it want to create through movements? Does it create through behaviors and coping mechanisms? Does it create by making something on a canvas or inventing something or singing or creating events? How does that life force that's stuck in you that we call stress and trauma, how does it want to create? Just ask it. See what it shows you. And show me when you find out. Ooh. That's the end of today's episode. Now let's take a moment to notice where we feel the episode in our bodies. Close your eyes. Take a breath. And let whatever wants to come up, come up. And remember, those sensations hold the wisdom that we're looking for. If you want to go deeper, visit holisticlifenavigation.com.